The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Many, many stories that are coming out about, about Rabbi Chaim Kadyevsky, Zechazadik Lebracha. One of the most amazing stories that I saw is we all know what Zman, what time meant him, the Shmir Zazman, what it meant him. I just saw a clip. There's a party in his house. I don't know what the party was about. It's obviously some big celebration. Maybe it's an anical, something, and the place is pandemonium. It's pandemonium. Rav Chaim has nothing to do with it. He's sitting there learning his form, completely oblivious, right? There was no such thing. Nothing was a vatal in Zman, right? The, the moments, the, the minutes that, that he had, you know, that he spent even with the public. I was Mikatsa, like the, the whole source of the buha. What's the source of the buha? Because seconds and seconds and seconds pile up, right? They, they pile up. So Maya said the Shemir Zman that he had was half of a But there was one thing that he did with his man, it didn't make a difference. His, his, his son said by the Shiva, he said that whenever his mother, uh, whenever his father ate, whenever Abchaim ate, he would not eat until the Rebetzin came into the room with, to eat with him. Never did that. And he said sometimes it was not seconds, but many, many minutes. And it didn't make a difference. And if it meant not eating, he wouldn't eat. The, the, the cover that Chachamim had, that they understood for the Rebetzins, is Hafla of Fela Mamish. A very good friend of mine is a well, well-known therapist. He used to ask all the Shilas, big Ashkaf of Shilas, to Rabbi Yankim Kamenetsky. Rabbi Yankim in those days lived on East 9th Street by his son, Rabbi Bramel Zechon Lebracha. And he was very, very accessible those days. You can go into, it was very easy to go to Rabbi Yankim. And so my friend went into Rabbi Yankim to ask him something. And when he came in, his Rebetzin was, was, was his second Rebetzin. And he said, and the Rebetzin comes in, and this fellow comes in, so she says, would you like to have a tea? So Bianca said yes. I think my friend deferred. Okay. She comes back a few minutes later, and in the meantime, Bianca starts telling my friend about his marriage. Unbidden, without an answer. He said that after his first wife was the Pteris, he had decided that basically his life was over on some level. And if you know anything, he moved her to Israel. He took a chavrus, a dentist, tremendous lama chacham, the dentist was retired. Akili, he was retired. He was a matastarf, had an apartment in matastarf. And they sat and learned, if I remember correctly, it could be a Torah or one of the Batim Adrashim there. They sat and learned chavrusas, that's what it was. After learning with chavrus for a while, chavrus tells him, he says, you're a back into Kabanetsky. This is what he's telling my friend. The back is telling this to my friend. He says, you're a back into you were Rosh Hashiva, this and that, and you're sitting here learning like, it can't be such a thing. So he says, you have to go and get remarried and you have to continue your life. Kachav, Shafim Mashidach, he moved back to America, if you remember, moved to Muncie, yeah. And Rabbi Yankov looks at my friend and he says, Svel of Yar, it's 12 years that she gave me my life back. That's right. Hafla Mamish. You know, we like to think somehow that, you know, especially among the G'daylim and the Senat, you know, they're always in the limelight. Hafla Fela. Hafla Fela. There was a story when, when Ramesha went into the, uh, the, the, um, the Agudis Yisrael, uh, they made every year, they made a Isim Mishnayis. Every single year. Pirchet made every year. And they used to fill up the room with hundreds of people in the Beis Yankov, a borough park. I remember when I was a little kid. We used to go. We used to learn Mishnais by heart. If you learn a number of by heart, you got to go. You got to go, right? So hundreds, hundreds of people. So if I remember correctly, I, I think it was he was walking with Rip Schneier. They came together in a car. And they're coming into the, to the thing. And Rip Schneier said, maybe we should go in like from a side entrance. He said, it shouldn't be Matriach. Everybody he says, no, 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 no. And, and he went into the front. And, of course, when they went into the front, the whole crowd stood up and said that. And afterwards, Rav Shnei said, why did you make such a public spectacle? So he said, for us, Taka, we don't need it. But our wives, who put in so much into us, put so much effort, they, sh- they should see what it's all about. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to Inspire.org.